It's time for another closer look at a key Kentucky Derby contender. And here's your host, Magic. Hey! Welcome back to Racings.com. I'm Magic, and today we're taking a closer look at early Kentucky Derby contender Messier for the Bob Baffert Barn. And with me to talk about Messier is Aaron Halterman. And Aaron, it was a very impressive win in the Robert B. Lewis Stakes, but I'm not going to name names. There's a few people who have put him on blast that said, okay, well, he looked good doing it, but... Who did he beat? And to borrow a phrase from one of our good close friends, uh, Mr. Dwayne Johnson, it doesn't matter who he beat. He gets the best <laughs> buyer speed figure of any three-year-old or any horse in this three-year-old crop. Beats Jack Christopher's 102 that was the best uh, previously for last year. So I think at this point, it doesn't matter who he beat. Messier looks really solid. You know, you're the hardest person in the world to be mean to. I'll just say that. I was ready to blast you and say, boy, but then you're just so nice. It's like, oh, I can't do it. Um, Listen, you did a video, a reaction video that was very good, by the way, uh, uh, with uh, Messier and the Robert B. Lewis. And you made a couple of comments that were kind of cringeworthy for me. So number one, who did he beat? Well, first and foremost, you would love all these horses to go up against each other, all the top ones before we get to the Derby. So we know the reality is it just doesn't it just doesn't happen. Who did he beat doesn't really matter when he wins by 15 lengths, right? So that's number one. Uh, if he would have beat that field by three or four, I would be in your camp of, well, yeah, nice win, good job. Eh, it's like, yeah, whatever. He beat, he beat some decent horses, but probably nobody any good. Also, when, uh, when, when Sir Loudon kind of fell out of it, you knew the margin was going to be pretty big, right? Because he was kind of the only other one. He was up there with him. I don't know what happened to him. He just completely stopped. Uh, it'd be interesting to see where he comes up next. And something happened to him. But anyway, it, so you got to look at things. You go, okay, he beat nobody. But okay, let's watch the replay. Okay, he wins by 15. Okay, that's that's pretty good. I mean, winning by 15 is not easy. How did he finish the race? Like, was he, was he wobbly-legged? No. Was he slowing down? No. Did he do everything he's supposed to do? Just run straight as a string right down the stretch? Yeah. So it's like, I, I don't know what you want him to do. Would you, did you want him to run on two legs the last quarter? Would that have been impressive? Do a backflip? Uh, maybe flip maybe right do a pirouette. A pirouette yeah. at the 16th pole would have been nice. right. I mean, get through the wire, turn around like Tyree Kill does, and do a backflip into the end zone. I mean, with that, <laughs> I don't know what you would have wanted him to do. I, 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 that, so that was a little cringe. But the, like the facing the short fields in Santa Anita and, and they can't go on to the Derby or, or other races when they're facing the short fields. I mean, that's been just proven over and over and over. I'm not saying you said that, but I've no. seen it said, and it's yep. like, that happens every year, every year on Twitter, they go, yeah, he's facing four horses in California. Well, look who wins the Derby most years, the California horses. Um, listen, some legit reasons maybe that you don't like him that, that people don't like him, I should say, that I disagree with um, set fractions that weren't like, completely fast you know over San Anita track mildly slow I would call him and so yeah he did kind of have you know a nice easy lead not not much in the field and just kind of had things his own way my rebuttal to that is we've kind of seen he doesn't really need the lead like he's won from off before so I don't know that that's really a factor but I get it uh, a lot of people are saying yeah but he lost the slow down Andy it's a fact that you can't refute it did happen um I don't think it's going to happen again. But again, it is a logical thing to say, well, I don't know how much I like him because he did lose the slowdown Andy. So there's a couple things there. But for me personally, I don't know what more he could have done. It was a February derby prep. He gets a 103 buyer. He wins by 15. He did nothing in the stretch to make you think this horse can't go longer. You referenced it very well on uh, your, your reaction show. And I was talking to a couple of friends uh, last night pedigree wise should get better as they go longer really um and so a horse ran a mile and 16th got a 103 buyer in february and we're saying he should get better off this race and we've said all year so far well since really november that breeders cup juvenile which was bad crops not very good i don't i have no idea how he can't be number one out of this race other than the one legitimate factor bob baffert all right, we can touch on that in just a second. But to keep going with Messier, it's a horse that you and I have talked about a few times on the Racing Dudes YouTube channel. Uh, he won the Bob Hope Stakes at Del Mar. Uh, he's, by the way, he's undefeated when he's not at Los Al. His two career losses, they're both at Los Al. That track is just funky. There's a lot of reasons horses don't like that and can go yeah. elsewhere and be really solid. So we'll not hold that against him either. But 
he we reminds about... me a little bit on that just real quick he yeah. reminds me a little bit of mckenzie if you remember mm-hmm. mckenzie uh salamini beat beat him now mckenzie got elevated to, to first in right. the low style derby but salamini finished ahead of him right and everybody was like wow maybe mckenzie wasn't what we thought he was salamini like never won again after that and and mckenzie ended up being a really nice horse and before he got hurt was going to be a top two or three choice in the derby so yeah to your just to kind of drive that point home yeah Things can get really funky. Horses can win by by uh, like the way that uh, we saw Messier win. They can do that a little sell because it is the longest mm-hmm. stretch in North America on dirt. But regardless, Messier, if we're talking about distance and how he's going to get better as the distances theoretically get longer. Mile and a quarter should be right up his alley. We'll touch on the Bob Baffert thing in a second, but he is an Ontario bred. The Queen's Plate, which is a million dollar race in Canada for Canada breads, he's eligible for that. It's mile and a quarter. I think that's a great spot for him if they can't go to, say, the Kentucky Derby. But let's talk on that now because we're now on February 7th. The Bob Baffert saga continues to roll on. The, they're still you know, debating and, and the judges reviewing all the cases from the Naira lawsuit. We don't know what's happening, but I think the owners, Aaron, they've made it pretty clear. They're sticking with Bob Baffert through thick and thin. So that means at this point, Messier, we're not going to see him in the Kentucky Derby. For me, that's a big reason I was kind of down on what happened, and you correctly picked that out. But talk to the audience more about why that's kind of affecting people like us, and we're like, okay, well, he was great, but we're not super excited about it. I told you off air, I said you made some comments that you probably don't believe just because you hate Bob Baffert, and you hate the situation. Maybe not even hate Bob Baffert, which most of us kind of do, but you hate the situation. Right. Even if you support Bob, you hate the situation that's Mm -hmm. happened, right? And so I get it. It's hard to watch that and get excited because in the back of your mind, you're like, well, I'm not even going to see this horse in the Kentucky Derby. And and, and that is disappointing. I get it. So that's really what's, I think, going on with 90% of the people that just didn't like this horse. And I understand. And like you said... We, we did a we did a, a video about this about a month ago, and we said, look, none of these connections have changed uh, the trainer from Bob to somebody else that have upcoming three-year-olds. It's now February, and still none of them have. This was certainly, Magic, whether you hated him or not, you have to admit he's certainly like a top three contender, right? They have to change, or they're just going to skip the derby. And I, I brought it up a month ago, and you did as well. We talked about it, and we were like, surely that won't happen. But with each passing day, it seems like it's going to happen. It really feels like they're going to skip it. Like, I think the reality is they're going to skip it. So, yeah, it brings races into the play for all of these horses. And like I said, his special case, Ontario bred, <laughs> maybe say, the hell with it. We'll go to the Queen's Plate. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's, it's a wild thought, but it's possible. It's one of the very few races for three-year-olds that are at least not grass races that Bob Baffert hasn't won. So you've got to think he's, well, if I can't win the Kentucky Derby, maybe I'll go win the Canadian Kentucky version of the Kentucky Derby what, What's well. the date on that? What's the date on the Queen's Plate again? Uh, Queen's Plate, it's towards the end of August. Uh, that kind of lines up with where the Traverse Stakes is pretty close to that as well. So, yeah. I don't, well, we'll see. We'll see what the Bob Baffert contingency hey. does. Listen, we, we could have six Baffert horses in the Preakness because right, right now he can still run in the Preakness. Hey, we could it, have the best Preakness ever. We could have a good Preakness. And think of this. It's not a lock that he's going to be able to run horses at Naira by August as well. So it's not, true. It's not crazy. Now, when you first said it, I was like, Oh hell, he'll go to the Travers, but what if he's barred at Naira? The, the Queen's Plate, perfect sense for this horse. And you know how many horses are going to be in the Haskell <laughs> if he can't run at Naira? You know, so you're right. The Preakness, the Haskell, you know, these these kind of races. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe he'll have six in the Iowa Derby. Magic, we'll see. One thing's for sure, uh, whether you like him or you hate him or you definitely hate the situation, Bob Baffert continuing to make waves in the Triple Crown Trail, even if he can't earn points for it. So, yeah. Aaron, thanks for going through this. I know this is a, it's an interesting situation with the Bob Baffert horses. Regardless of your opinion of the trainer, the horse definitely looks like he's the goods, has plenty of ability. And once again, it doesn't matter who we beat. Make sure you go to RacingDudes.com. Check out the free picks for every race, every track around the country. Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you really like it. Tell all your friends. We'll see you at the track. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels, never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.